How are you doing? How are you doing? Welcome back to the Weekly Comet. I'm Jonathan McHugh. <laughs> and I'm Tamara Conniff. On today's show, we are lucky enough to have Meredith Valiando, the producer of the Digi Tour, the hottest concert tour of the year, the popular online musicians and personalities, the ones that like we might not have heard of, but they have a combined viewership of about 2 billion views and 10 million subscribed fans. And all these artists are going on tour, and she's going to talk to us about it. Wow. That's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. A lot of friggin' kids on YouTube. And also, KCRW DJ Jason Kramer will be here, and he'll have his weekly pick to click. And today's one, Beth Jeans Houghton, the English singer-songwriter signed to one of our favorite labels, Mute Records. We love Mute Records. And as always, we have great live music. Yes, I came across this singer-songwriter. Uh, we have an amazing performance, and she'll do two performances today. So without further ado, give it up for Cherish Lee doing one of my favorite new songs called Live Life. got game, huh? Amazing. She what a great game. performance. Cherish will join us later for some couch chatter, and we'll find out her musical story as the offspring of not one, but two famous parents. But now, it's time for the news. Yes, Madonna, the ultimate material girl, pulled out all the stops for her Super Bowl halftime show. She played a bunch of old hits and her new single. 
She only misstepped once, but she was wearing seven inch stiletto boots, so, you know, who wouldn't? However, MIA did try to take the spotlight away from her by flash of the middle finger. You popped that up, didn't you? You know, which you're not supposed to do on national television. Uh, both the NFL and what about NBC the apologized. Can you pop that, you pop that up on the internet? I think you do it on the internet. Sweet. Uh, both the NFL and NBC apologized. So, yeah, I guess. And the game um, did not disappoint. One the, of the game best did games not in disappoint. Came down to the last play, and my New York Giants pulled it out. So, I was very happy. Um, so speaking of national anthems and uh, Super Bowls, Kelly Clarkson killed the national anthem. Amazing. Uh, unlike Steven Tyler, I got a little flack for the AFC uh, championship game. So um, you know, it's a tough song to sing. But that's how Steven sings. I know he's a very you know, raspy, the, the raspy kind of fella. The thing about that performance was that's how Steven sings. Right. So anyway. So big week this week. My head is spinning, oh spinning like God, Linda Blair for the Exorcist. It's amazing that you and I can even you know, know speak English right now. No, we took the right time out for you people for the weekly comment. Uh, Grammys are upon us, <sighs> full tilt boogie. So let's just talk about it. What, where were you last night? I last night was at the Van Halen dress rehearsal at the forum and I have to say I've been to a lot of shows in, in my life. One or two? One or two. You know a couple. And this was truly the best show I've ever seen. What? I swear Why? Eddie Van Halen played a ten minute solo that made me cry. David Lee Roth's voice is off the hook. The stage production and the set and everything about it is simply amazing. This is gonna be the so I hottest need to go tour to, of the I need year. to go to this you need to go see this. And do they do my old favorite song Jamie's Crying from the first record? No. I don't know if I'm going. No. There. That's an awesome And even song. the new record is good, and rumor has it that they're going to debut probably top five wow. with the new album. So, All right. yeah, I was so very, very the impressed. The boys are back, basically. And they are, you know, probably going to be at the Grammys in some shape or form. No, we'll see about that. You never know. Um, yes, last night also was the Grammys kickoff uh, with the uh, Producers and Engineers Wing Party, which has become the, quite the A-list, hard-to-get-into party. And last night was no different, honoring Jimmy Iovine, who uh, we know is the chairman of Interscope Records and uh, the co-creator of uh, Beats by Dre. But, you know, when you really look at Jimmy's history, produced Bruce Springsteen, Tom Petty, Stevie Nicks, Mark Knopfler and Dire Straits, just a beast of a record producer who... And he's on Idol now. And, and now he's on Idol. And he, so he joked about that, the fact that they actually let a guy like him from Brooklyn, Staten Island on American Idol. And he kept talking about how these opportunities have come up to him that he didn't deserve. Right. Um, but, you know, when you look at the video they show, you just like your mouth drops of how, what kind of career this guy's had. Amazing. And uh, some of his famous friends in, in the house last night, Will I Am, uh, App from the Peas, and Dr. Dre, obviously his cohort, and Beats by Dre were there. And uh, performances by Skylar Gray who wrote uh, Love, Love the Way You Lie Skyler. with Eminem, and uh, I Need a Doctor for Dr. Dre, which is his, was his comeback record. And the much buzzed about uh, Lana Del Rey performed last night. Very buzzed about. And uh, she, you know, just comes out, sings her song, does not say a word to the crowd, and just gets off stage. But she's beautiful, she's got a great voice. But she's been taking some flack lately, I believe. Did she cancel her tour? She canceled her tour. The Saturday Night Live performance, I guess people said she wasn't quite ready to jump into that level of things. And all of a sudden, she got that feedback, the blast back, the blowback oh. that happens when you come up too quick. Right. But meanwhile, she sold 75,000 copies in America and half a million around the world in one week. So she's just looks like a global superstar right out of the bat. And Jimmy was raving last night how people don't make good albums anymore. <sighs> um, and she's, you know, the record's really strong. So look for big things. Well, we'll but see. But I think she's too big to get on the comment by now. I don't know. We'll try. Well, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe in a little bit. Maybe. We'll see. There have been a ton of Grammy announcements. Like, it seems like there's one a day, and it absolutely makes me dizzy. One of the coolest ones was is that dance music is finally getting its proper spotlight on the Grammy telecast with my, of course, my favorite Dead Mouse. Uh, David Guetta, Lil Wayne, Foo Fighters, and Chris Brown are all going to come together to do like a special tribute to dance music. I actually just saw the Dead Mouse um, live concert video that he did in Toronto. 65,000 people yeah. went to see a DJ. Kids like that dance 65, music. 65,000 people went to see a DJ. Right. Incredible. Yeah, so, so we're really excited. The structure, the structure that the is going to be they actually that. they're not going to do it in the Grammy House, but it'll be outside on the plaza right. with real fans like a, a outdoor L.A. Live rave kind of thing. 
So uh, it should be a lot of fun. <laughs> Who would have thought that the day would come where the Grammys would throw a rave? Like, I don't you even know. know what to say about that. Um, and speaking of the other side of the coin, 50th <laughs> anniversary of the Beach Boys. We'll be celebrating with Brian Wilson. He hasn't performed together with his group in 20 years. Wow. And they'll be taking the Grammy stage with some of the hottest new artists this year, Foster the People and Maroon 5. And they're going to do some of the Beach Boys classics uh, together as wow. one. So as one. We will see. As one Beach Boys. We will hope. We will hope that it's an awesome segment. But yeah, tune in for the Grammys Sunday night, 8 o'clock CBS. Great show. It's going to be an amazing show, and we'll be talking about that next week as well. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and now, speaking of the new, we're going to bring in our tastemaker buddy, Jason Kramer. And, uh, you, know, you know, he does a music supervisor, and he does his Saturday nights on 10 o'clock on KCRW. And he's going to show us uh, a new pick to click. Jason's our guy. Each week he turns us on to some of the best artists ever. And now we're going to check out Beth Jean's Houghton. Some of the backstory on her. She is 22 years old. Um, she is amazing. I got an opportunity to hang out with her. She was up here in Malibu visiting uh, different musicians and all that. She's working with a new producer that's coming up for her new album. It's a brand new album of hers that I absolutely love. Uh, Beth Jean's Houghton is her name. 22. She 
she describes herself as someone that sings Baroque and Roll. That's her new Baroque coin. Baroque and Roll. I Baroque like that. Roll. It's a new genre. Interesting. It's a new genre. She is a fan of like Frank Zappa, uh, Captain Beef, Beefheart. Um, she loves classical music, opera music. Uh, loves to collect vinyl, and she puts that all together into this amazing piece right when here. When you were in Malibu, was she sunbathing topless? No, perhaps? no, no, no. She's okay. just doing her thing, man. I actually had a big, huge hat, like a, like an old Russian or something. It was funny. <laughs> and so <laughs> Mute signed her. <laughs> Mute signed her about a, I think about a year ago. She's got the new album that's that's out. So she's a priority from you. She's a priority from you. Um, so like, well, you had Barry Adams a couple weeks ago, former Mute. Barry Adams in here. And now you got the, the new Mute. So you I got, got old English Mute, new thing Mute. Going on. You're big well, on that. Mute's a good and the Howler. Are you like a Brit file? Is that what I'm doing? I'm a little bit. A little bit of Brit yeah. file, huh? Look, Hendrix started in Britain, even though he's from here. Keep mm. in mind, Hendrix had his first album, Are You Experienced, from That's Britain. Right. And then they so now we're going here. back to Hendrix, huh? We're going back to Hendrix, you know? So you're deep, man. Britain. You're a deep individual. We're going deep. Zeppelin, sorry, you know? <laughs> I like them Zeppelins. Yeah. Them Zeppelins are good. So that's cool. So how's. And where's Lana from? Uh, she's from America. She is, right? Yes. Yeah. She is. I'm not right. Yeah. She's Good job, Jimmy. So it. you were uh, out last night also, as we were. Oh, right. You had another gig. And what were you doing last night? Went to the Canadian consulate. Um, you are in Canada, at the House of Canada, it was called. House did they, of Blues. Did they wrap the House of Blues with the flag? No. Did they do that? No, but we all had to sing uh, They Canada. talked about doing that. Did they? Yeah. Oh, we had to sing O Canada really before did. we actually walked in, each, each an individual You did? No. <laughs> Do you know it? You gotta watch his poker. I just face. know the first no, part. No, he's got a good poker face. Poker. Pa -pa -pa -pa. <laughs> no, it was, it was fun. Good food. And food. Fun, what, is good food. what is Canadian food? What do they serve? It's the same as any place, really. I don't know. Okay. There's no real indigenous <laughs> wine. Food. I don't go for anything else. Uh, no. Wine and food. So tell us, tell us the good stuff. There. Who was the great band last night? Who played? I can't tell you that. Why? Because I can't remember. Oh my God. Well, tell us the you good stuff take notes, about later. Man. I know. If you're on the weekly comment, Short, you gotta be taking... just tell us. Oh, Martin Short. You and him are like this, right? Yeah. We met Martin Short was there. That was great. Um, they had another comedian. Dead Mouse was actually there last night. See, too. Is he he's Canadian. Canadian. Yes, he was. See that? We gotta get him on the show because I just keep talking about him. The Ghost of John Candy. That's gonna be a new band name. Watch. I like that. Oh, I like that. Yeah. New one. Ghost of John Candy. It's Sweet. gonna follow all the rest of these weird names for bands. I think, you know, originally, I think there was an old Robin Williams joke uh, that was Sammy Davis Jr. Jr. I don't remember if you remember that. So like Dale it, Well, that's, Earnhardt that's Jr. where it is. So I'm wondering if that's where they got that from. Okay. And this was Robin Williams' like, only record he ever put out. I think it was like in the early days, in the 80s, when, before all this stuff. And <laughs> when he was, you know, doing Robin Williams. And he did a you. whole thing on uh, Sammy Davis Jr. Jr. and all these... Uh, these schools for these prep kids of, of famous people that were juniors. Oh, the junior, junior. Yeah. Gotcha. And then Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr. Junior, junior. Sweet. Junior. Yeah. All right, so other Grammy things you're doing this weekend? Anything you None. can tell us about? No. You're just staying home, hibernating? Yeah. You got your show Saturday night. Yes, sir. When everybody's out Grammying, we could be is driving. Is that when it is? We could, well, it's Sunday, but we can oh, be the night before. <laughs> we could be out in our limos and cars. We could be listening to Jason Kramer on the radio. You could. KCOW.com. You could, if the limo has it. Every limo. Every limo has you, KCRW. I, uh, I took a job as a limo driver for two days. How'd it go? Wow. I hated it. Better than paramedics? I was a medic for, for 10 years. But before that, um, I, th I think the limo driver I didn't like was you had to wash that car all the time. And it was a big car. And then they said you had to tip everybody all the time. And I started doing the math on this. And I thought, where, where would I make money? Who would you have to tip? The car wash guy. Oh, OK. You would have to tip the car wash guy, the guy at the front door at a hotel. You have to tip Limo that? people do? Oh, yeah. I did not know that. Oh, because you're taking up so much real estate. Got you. It's all kickback. This guy's it's just got like a lot, the music industry. A lot industry. of fun facts, this kid. That's a whole lot of kickback. It's true. So next week you, you come back. You learned that in two days? And you give. Yeah. Next week you come back with more interesting music and yes. maybe even. A few more things. Do more. A few we, more things. You might even do more. You might even do more. I might do more. You might okay. do more. All right. Cool. Well, thank, well, thank you. Thanks for your time, though. Always a pleasure, my brother. That's it. We're going. We're going. Thank you. Good. We're going. Uh, and we will be right back with Meredith Velando. 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 Co-founder of the Digi Tour. Stay tuned. Tour, just like Junior Junior. Junior Junior. Tour Tour. <laughs> tour Tour. Dot com. Here's a promo of what this exciting cross-country tour is all about. Take it away. Hey guys, Ricky here, and I have a very special Digitour announcement. So I know all you guys have been keeping up with our Digitrack videos every Thursday, and you guys have been demanding your cities, and tweeting us, and hitting us up on Facebook, but the time has finally come. That's right, we are finally ready to announce the headliners for Digitour 2012. 
And your Digitour 2012 headliners are... Drum roll, please. Dave Days. To get you, if I never met you. Alex Goo. Asher Munro. Nice Peter. Me, Ricky Ficarelli. And the key of awesome. We want the old Kesha back. Screw you, Dr. Drew. Well, there you have it. The Digitour 2012 headliners. We're bringing YouTube to you. Bringing YouTube to you. Again, this March. Make sure you subscribe to this channel because we are going to be announcing guest stars and posts and tons of other awesome stuff in the upcoming weeks. And as always, I will be back this Thursday with another episode of Ginger Chat. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you later. Peace. Wow. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks really happy up. to have you. This tour is amazing. And we were talking a little bit backstage. Tell us how you came up with the idea and sort of how it started. We really want to know. Totally. So I have two amazing partners I couldn't do it by myself. It's Chris Rojas and Sarah Penna. And um, the tour basically came about um, when we sort of put our heads together and I was representing an artist on a major label at the time. And the label wanted me to get the social media right and also to put him on tour. So I was like, well, maybe we could uh, kill, kill two birds with one stone. And um, my partner, Sarah, um, she managed and continues to manage lots of big YouTube stars, including her husband, Mr. Guitar Man. Oh, um, the husband situation. And speaking of, so, and Chris, who's a record producer. Yes. He also is involved, right? And he's produced some of these talent, too? Yeah, he actually produced Dave Days' big song, What Does It Take? And he co-wrote that with him. And he's in the studio right now with Ricky Ficarelli's band, Wellington. And we're debuting their single this coming week, as well as... Um, You'll see us on TV. We'll be a part of a Blackberry um, Blackberry commercial, and the band is in the commercial. Wow! And that airs. And you're in the commercial. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm also in the commercial. <laughs> and when does it debut? Um, the 13th is the air date, so next week you should be seeing us on TV. That's fantastic. And you saw it here at the Comet first. Yay! <laughs> um, so anyway, so so the so the band's gonna all the how many different artists are gonna be on this tour? Well, we have six headliners, and then we have tons of guest stars. So it's sort of festival. Um, style, I like to think of it as the Lollapalooza of the internet. So um, in each market, we're going to 20 different cities. We're going to have regional YouTube stars as well as some special guests. Um, so there's six or seven artists traveling, but you're going to see probably around 12. How do you choose them? Do you choose it based, based on views or do you... Yeah, I mean, that has a lot to do with it and also quality. I mean, right. I come from A&R, um, Artist and Repertoire. Where did you work? Uh, Columbia Records is where I started, and then I was at Universal Music Publishing, and I was at Spirit Music Publishing. Mm -hmm. and so you've done both record side and publishing, yeah. which is a great background to have in this world. Totally. Um, and so I, I'm a scout. That's what I love to do. I love to find talent. I love to kind of just, that's my, that's my true passion. So now I've turned to YouTube, and that's where I'm looking for all of the stars well, I think it's interesting. A lot of A&R people are turning to the Internet and to yeah. YouTube, and that's where they're finding artists. Because obviously, if you have real fans and real views, you're a leg up from everybody else out there. So yeah, the social market, social media, couldn't be more important today. And there's some pretty big fans of this tour, right? Don't we have a? Yeah, well, we have a clip. But we could uh, LMFAO. Pop the clip up from LMFO if we could. We got some friends. You got some famous friends got out there. Got some famous friends who are looking supporting out for the you. tour. Yo, what's up, baby babies? We are. LMFAO, I'm Red Foo. And I'm Sky Blue. And you know what? What? We are down with, with the, the Digitour! Yeah, baby. See you soon. Shuffling. Every day I'm shuffling. Possibly one of my favorite. Favorite records. Mm -hmm. is, is this is it all ages? Is the show yep. all ages? Yep, it's definitely all ages, and we encourage families to go together. It's really a fun cheap evening. Cheap ticket prices. Cheap tickets. They start at ten dollars. So right. instead of going the... to the movies, go see all of your favorite YouTube stars. Right. So you debut March seventh in L.A. at the mm -hmm. El Rey Theater. Yep. 
You can go across the country. Yes. Play in New York, uh, Gramercy Theater. What else? Chicago, Miami. We'll be in Kansas City. We'll be in Toronto. Good. Toronto was really, really requested a lot last year, and so we're finally Canadians making again. our way up Canadians to Canadians like North that yeah. YouTube, too, huh? They love YouTube. And we were talking earlier that you are taking you know, some of these YouTube stars and trying to what you, you called it transmedia. Mm -hmm. So you're literally trying to take them and really create a brand for them outside of the internet as well. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about that. So we, Digitour has become this aggregator where stars big and small are coming to us and wanting to be a part of it. So we're able to really kind of comb through all of these various people in all different stages of their career and decide who we really want to take um, and build their brand outside of just the tour. So Ricky is a great example. We have a TV Ricky show. Ficarelli. Ricky Ficarelli. Ricky I love Ficarelli. that kid's name. That's yes. a wonderful kid. Great I spent name. a day with him. Wonderful kid. He's just, everyone wants to be around Ricky. He's got He's good infectious, vibes. Right. Um, so we're making an album with him right now, and we've, tra you know, based on his huge group of fans, he's trending on Twitter worldwide every week. Wow. Um, and everybody has been counting down the band search. They just can't wait to meet the other very, very cute four boys. Yes, so nice, ki nice kids. The 13th, you'll get to meet those boys. You get to hear his um, debut single. Um, and, you know, we have a TV show in development for him. We have him headlining the tour with his band. We are, you know, we're basically looking at everything from film, TV, music, um, new media, touring, merchandising, everything. So that's what we do with Greenhouse, right. which is my company that signs the talent. Right. She's partners with uh, Suzanne DePass right. mm -hmm. and Madison Jones, who are veterans, veterans in the film, film and TV space of producing stuff like Lonesome Dove and working on uh, MLK movie, right? Yeah, with, Spielberg. with Steven Spielberg. Some big players. They just did. A, they just got a first um, first look deal, three years with Universal Pictures, so nice. making films right. with Universal, and right. so we get to filter into all of this great stuff. Sure. And um, I think we provide a fantastic one-stop shop for mm -hmm. um, all things entertainment, and we're most excited about. YouTube stars that have really identified who their fans are, and then once they have something like that, we can take them, I think, from zero, well, not zero, from 60 sure. all the way up. <laughs> you're going to do a compilation, right, with Flying P Records, so yeah. that's going to be good to get everybody, everybody will get that out there right before the tour starts. Absolutely. We're so excited about that. Good. And sponsors, who's helping helping on the tour? Neuro is our amazing sponsor, along with Posse Audio. Mm -hmm. and. Um, they they are incredible. Um, without Neuro and Posse, this would not be possible. So um, gotta have that very, sponsorship. We're very grateful for their support. Cool. Well, listen, my money my money's on this. Is I uh, like her. I should, as, she got uh, game. Future, her future the, the music business. So one one last thing for you. Um, what what advice would you give people out there to try to who are trying to make music and trying to get out there to to, to get to this place that these yeah. kids have got to. Well, I think it's, you know, you don't have to sit around and wait anymore or, you know, make an album and send it into labels and just wait to get rejected. What you need to do is you need to film yourself, you know, experiment with sound, with different songs, and, and find your audience. Once you have an audience, everyone else will be interested in you. So my advice is start today. Create a channel, create your own videos, and and start to identify who likes what you're doing. And you could take a temperature really easily because if nobody's reacting, try something else. It seems like cover songs are really key, right? It's a great place to start. I always say to talent I work with, it's, you know, when you have a new song and a new artist, it's two things to kind of right. make a, a fan fall in love with. But if you, if you have one song that they already love, you're halfway there. The other thing I've noticed, which is odd, and I'd love your opinion on it, is the parody. Mm -hmm. The parody is huge. Right, you're one of you guys with Miley Cyrus parody. Talk about that for a second. Yeah, okay, and there, there's two big parody. I mean, Key of Awesome does all the big parodies. They were the... What's the name? Key of Awesome. Key of Awesome. So yeah, last no, these year, parodies are massive. Yeah, in 2011, they had the most views of any YouTube channel um, with their site, Barely Political. And they do the big firework, Katy Perry, um, Teenage Dream, Kesha TikTok. I mean, they are so hilarious. And they do well because YouTube, um, there's a lot of comedy in YouTube. So it's basically like, like Weird Al, but not. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it has a, a little bit of Weird Al in it. And it's just, you know, it's having fun. And it, it's making light. And it's not taking it too seriously. And um, I think they're, they're tremendous. And we're going to include a parody on our compilation. So the That's compilation great. will be a little bit of everything. You'll have parodies, covers, originals, exclusive content. Um, and we have Flying Pig Productions is an amazing partner on this. We're excited to really push it out there and, and give, uh, give all of our fans music in one place, sort of like now that's what I call uh, 
now that's what I call music for, yeah, they, for YouTube. They did okay with that now 58 or whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they're they're getting Everyone's up platinum. there. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much Thanks so for much, coming guys. on. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Thank you so thank much. You. It was great Mwah. seeing you. We will talk yeah. soon. Okay. And, uh, you know, as we mentioned earlier, um, Cherish Lee comes from a great stock. Oh, and yeah. And so check out where she got some of her musical chops. Yeah, this one's interesting. This one's interesting. I spent a lot of time looking for you Single bars and good time lovers are never true Playing a fool's game, hoping to win And telling those sweet lies and losing again Shirt? I know. I want one of those shirts. Hello. Is that thing in the Songwriters Hall of Fame? Where is that shirt? We want that shirt. <laughs> I don't know. We have to. I'm so gonna your do dad music. is Johnny Lee, That's and tell us about your mom. My papa bear is Johnny Lee, and my mom is Charlene Tilton. She was on the hit TV show Dallas, and she was on that for 11 years out of the 14 that it ran. Of course. Wow. So hot little mama. So where did you grow? How did you grow up in that world? Where did you guys grow up? Well, I mean, we traveled a bunch, but mainly grew up in the Los Angeles area. But, oh, you know, she was shooting the show here. They shot the interior here, and then we would all go to Dallas, <clears throat> you know, a couple times a year and shoot all the exterior. Exteriors, right. Which I just, I had gone to South Fork not that long ago wow. for the whole, and it's tiny. It's so it's small. Well, I just love that you said, I went to South Fork. See, that's a reference awesome. that went by me. I missed, I missed it. I was like, South Fork for me is Long Island. You know, where I, where I grew up, that's South Fork. I was having a Dallas moment. So you know Dallas a little bit. Huh? Yes, I do. I love it. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. Absolutely. You're amazing. Thank love, you so much for coming Live on Life. the show. It's a beautiful song. Live Life Thank is a you. gorgeous song. Tell us, about, tell us about your record. Well, we're making it happen. Um, I Basically, it's the coolest thing because I'm a huge believer in you can accomplish what you can see. And so... I kind of, I decided to move to Missouri where actually my dad lives and my brother, my Branson, brother, Missouri. Branson, Missouri. Yeah, you're right. And my brother is a phenomenal drummer. So we put together this band and we just, we went balls to the walls and, you know, just performed out as much as we could and traveled a bunch. And I came back and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. And um, a friend of mine who I ride motorcycles with introduced me to a lovely gentleman. And... Um, he was like, wow, you write all these songs. And I said, yes, I do. And then we started writing together, and then we started to put together a whole album. So it's almost complete, which Good. is exciting. And, um, yeah, I'm, you know, and I think it's, it's, if you have the opportunity to say something, figure out, like, what it is you want to say. And so, you know, that song, Live Life, got it tattooed on my knuckles, and it's a good reminder, you know. Can we get a close-up on that? Check it out right there. It's kind of cool. Live life. Live life. So that's a, so for you, that's kind of a metaphor for living. I mean, you really feel that passion yeah, in the song. Yeah, absolutely. Because, yeah, I mean, let's be honest, you're not promised another day. You're yeah. not promised right. another moment. So, you know, be, uh, I guess, for me personally, like, I choose to be happy, kind of be a light in whatever situation I can be. So, eh, you know, like yesterday, somebody nearly ran me over off the street, and I was like, Okay, that's their day. I'm not going to take it personally. <laughs> Let it roll off your back. I think Just all flutter off business a duck's deals back. should happen on motorcycles. <laughs> Shit, man. Absolutely. I, you know, I really do. I think everyone would be a lot happier. Some dangerous, <laughs> you could just like, get all your business done riding motorcycles. 
It's yeah, <laughs> I'm not a fan. I'm just truthfully, I like them. I'm obviously they're a, a little, fan, they're so. A, maybe I'm getting old, but they're a little loud, and they're dangerous. I know people that died. Yeah, but, yeah. People die. I crashed live my life. Like, live life. I, I'd, rather live, so I'd li rather live in a car. Thanks very much. Okay. So I, I cr actually much. crashed my motorcycle, and it was a really horrific crash, and I knocked out my teeth and messed up my face. If you saw pictures, like, I don't know how I healed the I way I did. Oh. But it was so funny, because for a while, I had a flipper, like, so you can, like, kind of just take it out. And Your so, teeth? Oh, yeah. So I, w I would be on my motorcycle, and a car full of guys would, like, you know, after I got it fixed, a car full of guys would be like, hey, I'm all on a bike. And I'd, hey, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Go go go! You know that is so, awesome. She's yeah. a rocker. That's a Saturday Night Live skit. Here's a question for you: How would you <laughs> yeah. describe your musical style? Because it's a little bit rock and roll, a little bit country. A little bit country. It's. I mean, mean, it definitely is like the complete mixture of really who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm one of the few people I know who was born and raised in LA, but can go to Branson, Missouri, and feel right at home. So it's got the rock element of, of that, very, you know, rock and roll. And then it does, it has the cool countryside where, you know, we tell a lot of stories. And I was just going to say, there's storytelling. And there's it's a good that. feel. Like, country music, it just feels good, right. you know? So. And there's a message. There is a message. So, yeah. Who are some of your favorite artists? Who are your inspirations? I ha oh, my gosh. My music collection is so eclectic. Um, I, uh, you know, some actually, Lana Del Rey, big fan of hers. Why? I love her. Because I saw the, her video, uh, Born to Die. Right. Super cool. I was just like, what is this? Like, I couldn't take my eyes off the screen. So anyway, she's, she's a new one for me. I, I dig her a lot. Um, I, I like what she's got going on. But as far as inspiration, you know, the, if, my gosh. My dad is actually one of them. But, you know... Miranda Lambert, I love her stuff. I love mm -hmm. like. The, she's a little bit rock and a little bit country. She, yeah, she's got it going on. Um, so your dad, have you performed with your dad much? Uh, yes, I have, and he comes to Palm Springs the 25th, and I'm gonna go ahead and perform with him there. Oh wow, my so God. he's still out there touring, doing it. Yeah, yeah. How many dates a year do you figure he does? He's maybe home once every week and a half. So he's wow. out there. Wow. Yeah. And where, what's your mom dog. doing these days? Mom is actually in London. She uh, was doing a show called Skating with the Stars out there. Wow. Oh, and wow. And Dallas was huge in Europe. So, you know, keeps her busy. And uh, I think she was just offered to play um, the Kathy Bates role in Misery. Great on, role. On stage? Yeah. She, could get kick, that's a can, she pulls out a can of whoop ass in that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Watch out. Mr. Man. Yeah, she'd be whooping <laughs> ass in that one. So she must be staying in good shape, man. Skating every night. Her, yeah, her <laughs> you body is like so calf like this, right? <laughs> yeah, right. She's like, I can't wait. She's like, can't touch this. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's so weird. Like my mother has never ice skated a day in her life. She is freakishly good. I watch her on really the ice. Funny. I was like, Too Oh dear funny. Lord, help my mother. Um, and she just blew me away. Seriously, you can find her clips on YouTube. Which I guess Charlene told Charlene me. skates. Yeah. <laughs> she goes. God um, bless. But yeah, check it out. Cool. Well, thanks so much. Yeah. Would you mind, uh, you one and Chris, mind song? doing one more song for us? Oh, please. please. Well, can we okay, twist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we yeah. twist away? Yeah, this one's called. Um, Tell me about, this is about actually, this, one. this is a new one. Brand new? I, brand Wait, new. Wait, is this a debut on the Weekly Comet? Yeah. We Ooh. haven't even got a debut. Lucky people out yeah. there. We, we got just a debut. started it in the studio, but it's called A Little Goes a Wrong Way. Ooh. And, a uh, double on time. I like yeah. that. Kevin Fisher and I. Good uh, writer. Wrote it, so. Good, good writer. Kevin's written him. hits for a bunch of people. Uh, right? Rascal Flatts, Sarah Evans. I mean, you go. He's a stud. To his, his home and <laughs> gold records and all that. So. Speaking of gold records, what is that? Oh. This is a, um, a gift that my stepmom <clears throat> and I got for my dad when I was, I think I was, what year is it? 87. Wow. 1987. Cool. That's when we got it for him. And then he gave you know it to me. Like? What is it of? Oh, it's, it's a, sorry, it's the gold record, Looking for Love. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so his song that we just heard a video was, was featured in Urban Cowboy. Yeah. And it was a huge song. Yeah. Occasionally, I will sing that song to my wife just, you know, randomly. Now that I know you, it <laughs> really? takes out. Well, you know, occasionally I'll be looking for love. <laughs> yeah. But I try to keep it in the right places, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, I'm funny. Uh-huh. Story anyway, of my life. Uh, thank you so much. Thank and you. Thank you very here, so much for having me. Take it away. Thank you. Cherish Lee. Cherish Lee. And walk, walk in and rock it. So that was fun so far. I've enjoyed that program. So you sing to Karen? I will sing to my wife occasionally in a very bad, you know, guttural, Staten Island I type like of that. sense. I like that. You're a romantic at heart there, Q. Valentine's Day is coming up. You know, That's I gotta, right. I got to get ready. Are you <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, you got to start getting ready now, especially given that you're going to be off the wire all week this will, week yeah, with I Grammys. won't see my family much this week. No. No, it's going to be a long week. But uh, we've, uh, you know, there's, there's great music out there, and Cherish Lee. Cherish Lee's Give ready. us some more great music. Thank you. Gotta be careful, all right. I know where this is going. If I just dip my toe in, I'll get swept up and away. Come on. I gotta get up and go home, cause I can't be well enough alone. I've learned from all of my mistakes that a little goes a wrong way. I've left footprints on that walk of shame And I got no one but myself to blame When that feels good and I know it should So I'm not gonna do what I swore I wouldn't Be careful, I gotta be careful Alright, I know where this is going If I just dip my toe in I'll get swept up and away I gotta get up and go home Cause I can't leave well enough alone I've learned from all of my mistakes That a little goes the wrong way There's nothing sweeter than the sound Of my high heels walking for this week's Weekly Comet. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next week. Yeah. Good Thank stuff. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Bravo.